Good morning on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. You're listening to a live broadcast from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. Luther Memorial is located at the corner of Nicollet and Prospect, just west of the state capitol. This week's radio broadcast is sponsored by Esther Schluter in honor of the Luther Memorial Church pastors and staff. Thank you, Esther. Pastors at Luther Memorial are Craig Wexler and Yang Chung. Today's organist is Linda Steele. Hymn numbers this morning are 790, 783, 638, and 742. Our service is about to begin, and our opening hymn is Day by Day, number 790 in the ELW. make you do something I've never made you do before. Stand up. Stretch. Say amen. amen. Sit back down. <laughs> good morning and welcome to worship everyone. It's good to be here this morning. It's, uh, it's good uh, to be back from vacation, I think. Um, I, I really enjoyed vacation. It was the first trip we've had as a family since long before Christmas. So thank you for giving us the time to get out. Um, if you haven't been on my wife's Facebook page, you want to see where we were at, go there and, uh, and smile because it was fun. We, were, we did an off-roading trip in Uray, Colorado, down by Telluride. Uh, we got invited to a Toyota-sponsored event, and we took our, took our truck 13,000 feet up into the mountains. Uh, actually, my sermon, there's a picture. You'll get to see what we got to see. So I uh, just want to thank you for allowing us the time to be away. Uh, Pastor Young is gone today. She is traveling in preparation of her next chapter as well. Um, for those of you that are wondering, her time with us comes to an end this Wednesday. So in the next few days, if you get a chance to extend your gratitude or give, give her a token of appreciation, um, certainly do keep her in prayer as well. She's, she's helped uh, us a lot with a lot of our support work behind the scenes. Those of you that are working with her on the care ministry, she's been uh, phenomenal there. So um, if you have any other questions about that, certainly reach out to me uh, later on or Pastor Young as well. A couple other quick announcements this week. If you have any kids or grandkids that aren't signed up yet for day camp, um, we have a bunch of volunteers that are going to be raising cane in this church for the next uh, this week uh, with our older kids downstairs outside I, I know that they're still looking for some cookies if you're willing to donate cookies and you have a knack to fire up your oven today certainly do that and reach out to Tammy or Melissa in the office and then my last announcement this Wednesday night down at Steamboat Park um, right across from the Chamber of Commerce there um, is going to be our last summer worship on the, on the river um, we are taking August off preparing for all of the fall activities that are coming but um, it's going to be a little bit different we are going to still worship we're even doing a baptism that night down at the river and uh, there's also going to be food there it's going to be a picnic so yes you're here today I invite you to come Wednesday night it's actually bumped up an hour to five o'clock due to the meal but um, it doesn't hurt you to be in church more than once a week trust me I'm here every day so and I'm still standing, so. Um, you certainly are invited, invite some friends, invite your neighbors, uh, just invite them to give them a little bit of energy for the rest of our summer. With that being said, let us begin worship this morning. I invite those who are able to please rise. I wanna, I wanna add this little tidbit here. 
This is actually one of my new favorite parts of worship. When Carmen and I and our girls were on vacation, we went to church at an evangelical-style congregation in Montrose, Colorado. And believe it or not, you can actually worship without a cross and confession, supposedly. The Lutheran in me was like, oh, I need to forgive my sins. I need to be, I need to be forgiven of my sins. So we Lutherans take this for granted. We just say it because the pastor says to say it. I want you to focus on the words this morning because I worshiped last week without confessing my sins and it felt weird. So, with me we come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick, and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another this morning. We begin with a moment of silence. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us that when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Our opening gathering hymn is Day by Day, number 790 in our red hymnals, number 790.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to take a moment and share that peace this morning.
The first reading is from Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 to 32. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose 40 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it. If, 30, if I find 30 there, he said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just one more, once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The psalm is Psalm 138. Please read responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down before the temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise the Lord when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is high, yet cares for the Lord, perceiving the body from far. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make the purpose for me, Lord. Steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 19. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy or empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses. 
erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the body, whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 11. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How do we preach on prayer? How do I do this in a way that doesn't sound like a confirmation class lesson, right? I mean, or a Sunday school lesson. Uh, How do we preach on this thing called prayer? Because I don't know if you guys caught it, but when I started reading the gospel, what came to mind? What did you hear? The Lord's prayer, right? Parts of it. We hear Luke's little version in which in which the disciple, we have this unknown disciple, they're not named in this particular moment, but he comes to Jesus. He, he witnesses Jesus sitting there. We don't know. I mean, maybe Jesus had his hands folded ever so right. Maybe he took his hat off and he bowed his head. Maybe he was on his knees next to his bed. We don't know, do we? Right? If you notice, I'm starting to kind of bring those connotations that we as parents try to teach our kids. I always get a chuckle uh, out of of the way that we we teach our kids that we're supposed to pray, right? And we have this disciple coming to Jesus wanting to know what he's doing and wanting to know how to do it. To us, that seems kind of like, it's it's kind of like this duh moment. It's like, really? The disciples had to ask Jesus how to pray? Well, the truth is, yes, they did. 
Yes, they did. Because in Jesus' time, in Jesus' time, you didn't do the prayers. You went to Holy Temple, you experienced the holy sacrifice of animals and incense and other things. The high priests and the Levites would have done their songs, their chants, their prayers. But you as a person, you showed up and you bowed down in reverence to God and that was it. Believe it or not, in the 1500s, if you were in the time of Martin Luther and you came to church, you also didn't do the prayers either. You came in, you maybe said a prayer out of your own practice or trying, but it was the priest who sat up there and did it all in Latin, and you sat there and listened and watched. So let's not pretend that you're supposed to have this all figured out and know exactly how to pray because even the leaders of the church, even the leaders in Jesus' time, they weren't accustomed to prayer on a regular basis. So this disciple, he hears, he, he remembers this guy named John the Baptist. Hey Jesus, remember your cousin John? He, told his, he taught his disciples how to do this thing called praying. Can you show us? We also have to remember that in Jesus' time, how to pray was not nearly as structured as we've made it in the Lutheran Church of today. Because in Jesus' time, you weren't even allowed to say Yahweh. Say it with me. Yahweh. In Hebrew, that's God's name. And they didn't even include that in the prayers out of fear of that commandment, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. We would say, you're praying to God. You're coming with a, heart, a good heart, a good mind. Why would God ever think? They were so afraid of God that they wouldn't even use his name in the prayer out of fear that they would offend the way they used it. So they genuinely are coming to Jesus saying, how do we do this? It seems like it's an important thing because we see you talking to God, talking to Yahweh, talking to your Father. And Jesus says to them, sit down and say, Father, who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us. Amen? Amen. Boy, have we taken that for granted. Come, Lord Jesus. Yeah, you've said a prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. Yeah, you guys have said a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Yeah. But we take it for granted often in this setting, in this space, in this worship setting. But I think the reason why in one hand we take it for granted is because in the other hand we still ourselves struggle to know what to do with it. So how do we pray? The reality is prayer is a part of our theology, a fancy word meaning how we study God or how we view God. Believe it or not, prayer is this example. If, if I want to know your theology, a good thing for me to do would be to say, Kasaya, start us in prayer and let's see where it goes. Carol, start us in prayer, let's see where it goes. I will know your theology really quick based on your prayer. How many of you are pray for thankfulness? How many of you are, are grateful prayers? Anyone, anyone include an ounce of thankfulness in your prayer, right? How many of you have gone to God with anger? Any angry prayers once in a while? I'll raise both hands on that from time to time. Any, any angry prayers, right? How about prayers asking for help? Any prayers asking for help, right? There's different themes behind different prayers. Now, which one's right and which one's wrong? Your good pastor in confirmation class told you there's no wrong way to pray, right? And there's some truth to that. On this picture on the screen, this was, uh, there's a lot of prayers going on right here in this picture. <laughs> right here, they say a picture tells a thousand words, absolutely. So Carmen took, well, Carmen leaned over me, she made me stop. If you notice off to the left is about a thousand foot drop. She made me stop and leaned over me taking this picture out, out of my driver's side window last week. Uh, we, were, we were on vacation down in Uray, Colorado, and this is between Engineer Pass and Cinnamon Pass. We're at about 12,000 feet right here looking out. Is God good? God is good. 
The prayers in this moment were a combination of absolute gratitude and awe for God's creation and what God can do, and a lot of other prayers with words and expletives that will never be repeated due to the sheer thousand-foot cliff off to the edge, right? We're coming around this corner. What you can't see on the right-hand side is a boulder about as tall as a baptismal font that we had to go off camber around. You have no choice. You go over it, you can't even turn around because the road is no wider than the truck, right? So there were some other expletives that went with that, oh, Lord Jesus, help us prayer, <laughs> right? Is there a right or wrong way? I don't know. The challenge for prayer in us, in our relationship with God, is the expectations that we bring into that conversation. The disciples genuinely wanted to have a conversation with God because they saw Jesus do it all the time. And God genuinely wants to have a conversation with us because so often in our lives, we don't talk to God very much. We don't bring our hurts and pains often enough, I would make the statement of. But, there again, it goes back to the expectations. For some reason in our tradition, we almost have it in the back of our minds that if you are going to be right with God and you're going to have a good and proper faith with God, you have to do what? You have to pray, right? Did God ever say that? No. And in our attempts, we've created these perfectly glorious, holy, structured prayers like, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Now I lay me down to sleep. Our Father who art in heaven, right? We, the church, gave that to us people as a gift to be able to have a rubric to start with. Jesus gives it to his disciples as a foundation of what to start with. But... If you say it or if you don't say it, does that have any bearing on your salvation? No. But who's the prayer good for? Does God need your prayers? I think he'd like them. Does he need them for your salvation? I don't think so. Prayers are good for us because it's good to talk to someone, right? Right. The challenge is, though, it always goes to the answers of the prayer. I think that's why we struggle the most, the answers of the prayer. I remember when my grandfather was on his deathbed years ago. Every single night, my prayer was, God, f help my grandfather, heal my grandfather, take away his cancer, help him get on his own two feet, give him his strength, heal him and let him be my grandfather again. And every night I listen to the ceiling fan spin, right? In time, those prayers change to, Lord, take away my grandfather's suffering. Take away his suffering. Let him go home to be with you. And of course, guess which prayer was answered? Right? Did I like it? No. But then there was also the time uh, that I was standing in Tulsa, Oklahoma. How many of you have ever been to Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah? How many of you have ever seen a thunderstorm in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Those thunderstorms eat our storms for breakfast. True story. True story. I'm down there. This is a couple years ago. I'm down there with uh, some, of my, some of my motorcycle friends from the Banditos Motorcycle Club. We're down there. We're camping out. And here we are on our last night in the campground. And all there are a bunch of one- and two-man tents and motorcycles and trees. And there's the biggest supercell I've ever seen in my life. And as the time, as watching it grow, it was beautiful at first. It's like, wow, isn't that glorious? And then you see that it's coming towards you, right? It's not quite as glorious when it's coming towards you. And I'm looking around the camp, and I see all these tents and these motorcycles. We call that debris. <laughs> Do you guys know what debris is? It hurts. <clears throat> So here we are, and we've got, a, we've got all these big, giant canopy tents over to the side. And there's a couple thousand bikers, big, tough bikers, standing over here. And they are terrified of what we're seeing. And I walked out into the field, and I just started talking to God. I started talking to God. I said, Lord, I need you to do something. And it was really weird. It was so far from my departure. I was, I was feeling really un-Lutheran at this point. I started saying, Lord, this is not a test. I'm not testing you. I really genuinely would like your help right now. Because that thing right there is really nasty and scary. And off at that point in the distance, I could hear tornado sirens firing up in the county next to us. And you could hear the, the breeze is wafting that sound over. And I said, Lord, I really, really, really need you to do something right now. And as I'm standing there praying and talking, everyone else is seeking 
seeking shelter, and two of my friends, Owen and Cliff, they come out and they go, Pastor, what the heck are you doing? I said, I'm praying. They said, well, why are you doing that? I said, you got any better ideas to try to get this thing to go around us? And they said, nope. And then all of a sudden, they, they, uh, Owen, Owen looks at me, he goes, can I say a prayer with you? I said, yeah, we need all the prayers we can get. And he goes, okay. He starts praying in Lakota. Because Owen and Cliff are Lakota from Pine Ridge. And he starts praying this Tatankshala and all these beautiful words. And he's saying a prayer right next to me as I'm saying my prayers. And then all of a sudden, Cliff, he starts going like this. Starts pretending he's shooting an arrow in the sky. And I said, Cliff, what are you doing? He goes, something you white man will never figure out. <laughs> I said, yeah, I haven't figured it out. What are you doing? He goes, in my culture, I shoot an arrow at the storm and it sends the storm back to where it came from. And I said, you keep doing what you're doing. Owen, you keep doing what you're doing. We're doing this. And about five minutes later, Dan, the president of the region, he comes up and he says, what the heck are you guys doing? And he didn't say heck. I said, we're praying, Dan. We're praying that the storm misses us. And he pulls out his phone. He's looking at the radar. He says, you keep doing whatever the heck you're doing because check this out. The storm literally started splitting on the radar. About 15 minutes later, I had the most glorious lightning show I've ever seen, all 360 degrees around us. And I can count on one hand how many raindrops fell and hit me on the head. Does God answer prayers? He did for me in that moment. Does God answer prayer? Are there some prayers that we feel like God doesn't answer? The moment watching my grandfather die, I felt like it. But brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not about whether or not we're always going to get our way. When the disciples come to Jesus, they didn't say, teach us how to get our way. Did they? No, they said, teach us how to talk to God. If I could tell you, if I had the magic ticket to tell you how to get your way, deep down inside you want to know, Pastor Craig, teach us that prayer that helps us win the Powerball. Right? Teach us that prayer that teaches us how to win the Powerball. I don't know how to teach that prayer, and Jesus didn't spend a lot of time teaching that one either. He didn't. I'll share one last story. This is one reason why I really like the church, one reason why I really like Lutheran, and one reason I really like that the church has given us the gift of how to talk to God. My internship year, <clears throat> I was about halfway through my year, and Pastor Steve, my mentor, my supervisor, he said, he said, Craig, I need you to go do a visitation today. I want you to go, to go talk to Miss Mary down at the nursing home. And I said, okay, yeah, I'll go talk to Miss Mary. So I went down to the nursing home. <clears throat> I talked to the resource nurse. I said, Pastor Steve Moline sent me over to talk to Miss Mary. And, uh, and, and she, she chuckled. She goes, you're going to talk to her? And I said, yeah. And she just chuckled. And she goes, okay, I'll show you her room. So I went over there, and I sat down next to Miss Mary. She was in her wheelchair looking out the window. And I started to talk to her. She didn't talk back. In fact, for the next 15 minutes, I discovered that she didn't say a single word. She stared out the window and said absolutely nothing. I said a quick prayer, and I left the room. I went up to the resource nurse, and I said, can you tell me a little bit about Miss Mary? And she goes, oh, yeah, she's a mute. Thank you, Pastor Steve. <laughs> I went back to the church, didn't think much of it. Two weeks later, I'm at lunch again, and Pastor Steve looks at me, and he goes, Craig, have you seen Miss Mary lately? And I said, well, I saw her a couple weeks ago. He goes, you should go visit her again. I said, okay. So I went over to the nursing home. I went over to Miss Mary's room. I sat down. I started talking about the weather and the birds bouncing across the lawn outside, and Miss Mary said, nothing. How many of you have ever had a conversation with me for more than five minutes? How many of you know that I can fill the time with conversation? <laughs> to sit in the presence of a woman who is clinically a mute was incredibly difficult for me. So I went back to the office, and about a week later, Steve said, so Craig, are you going to go visit Miss Mary? And I said, what's the catch? And he starts laughing. He goes, what do you mean, what's the catch? Yeah, I said, why do you want me to go visit, Mar visit Miss Mary? He goes, because you're my intern, and I need you to go visit Miss Mary. I said, okay, but what's the catch? And he goes, there is no catch. And I said, there's a catch. She can't say a word, Steve. So what am I supposed to say? And he goes, well, you obviously haven't said something yet. I said, can you give me a hint? He goes, try the Lord's Prayer. So I went back over to Miss Mary. 
and I sat down, and I put my feet up on the windowsill next to her, and I sat in silence for 10 minutes and looked out the window. And then I finally looked at Mary, and I said, Mary, I don't think I've done something that I'm guessing you probably need. I'm going to say a prayer. I said, Our Father, who art in heaven. And as soon as I said, Who art in heaven, it's like a switch went on. She turned, she looked me right in the eyes, and word for word, we finished the Lord's Prayer together. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Tears were streaming down her face. She looked at me, she said, thank you, and went back to looking out the window. I went back to the church. I was like a little kid in a candy store. I knocked on Steve's office and I said, holy. And he smiled and he goes, that right there is the power of prayer. And that's the power of liturgy. And don't you ever forget it. It took me three visits to figure it out, brothers and sisters, but the prayer that the Lord gave us has the ability to do some amazing things. And deep down inside, it's my hope and my prayer for all of you that we cling to those conversations with God. We cling those moments, not always bringing in our expectations and prayers. I'll share one last sentence from one of my favorite theologians, William Barclay. He said, what I've learned in all of this journey in life, in my life with prayer, he said, there's no such thing as unanswered prayers. There's no such things as right or wrong ways to pray. The answer given may not be the answer we desired or expected, but even when it is a refusal, it is the answer of the love and wisdom of God. We won't always figure it out right here, right now. But God, our Father, always gives what the child asks for, even if that gift that's given is not what we always expected. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite those who are able to please stand and let us join together in the hymn of the day, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, number 783. profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world. Amen. You may be seated as we receive this morning's offering.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come together joining the prayers of the church and our people. Lord God, we come before you this day. And we ask you to give us courage, to give us courage to have conversation with you, to share with you our hurts and our concerns, our joys and our gratitude. Lord, you beg for us to have a relationship with you. And we know that you have a relationship with us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bring the leaders of this world and the leaders of our country to prayer. Bring them to their knees in conversation with you, Lord, asking for your wisdom and guidance. May the words of unity and graciousness be upon us and be upon everyone in our community as well. Lord, in your mercy. And Father God, we lift up all those in prayer in our community who need your strength and presence during their great time of need. Be with Bob and Judy Bauer, Rod Jervie, Myron Kusler, Jim Lechness, Rana Masteller, Bill O'Connor, Kevin Sarvis, Sarah Graves, Mike Baker, David Mellum, Brian Konzum, Claire Pashong, Jared Yost, Patty Ainsworth, Chris Maxwell, Ron Hag, Gene Rounds, Janice Bergeson, Andrea Thielen, Nick Abbas. We lift up Jackie Ritchie and her family and the loss of her mother-in-law this week, Lord. And we especially also lift up Travis Tipton and the rest of the soldiers, Nick Abbas, and all of those families from the 152nd CSSB appear as they approach their activation and as they are deployed this day. Lord, be with their families. May our communities surround these mothers and their children back here at home and keep protection over the soldiers as they deploy. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we lift up all of these prayers to you and we join together in the prayer that you did teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in our sending him. What a friend we have in Jesus, number 742.
in peace, love, and serve the Lord. This concludes the Sunday morning's worship service from Luther Memorial Church in Peel. You can worth You can worship with us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. or you can join us on Saturday evenings at 5:30 p.m. for our modern contemporary worship service called Saturday Night Live. Whatever your schedule is, you're invited to worship with us. If you can't join us in person, you can listen to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning by tuning into KGFX AM 1060, FM 107.1, or on the internet at drgnews.com by clicking on Listen Live. We provide a live video stream of our services on our Facebook page. You can also watch a televised recorded broadcast of our worship service each Wednesday at 4 and 6 p.m. on Oahe Cable's Channel 8 or 608. If you tune into our radio or televised services regularly and would like to follow the service more closely, we would be happy to send you our weekly bulletin. You can also order our hymnal. Just contact the church office at 224-8608 or write to Luther Memorial Church, 320 East Prospect, Pierce, South Dakota, 57501. Special thanks to Esther Schluter this week for sponsoring this week's radio broadcast in honor of Luther Memorial Church pastors and staff. Our radio and TV broadcast rely on financial support from members of Luther Memorial and other regular listeners and viewers. If you would like to sponsor a radio or TV broadcast in honor of a special occasion or in memory of a loved one, please contact the church office at 224-8608. So now on behalf of past pastors Wexler and Chung and the congregation of Luther Memorial, we extend our prayers to you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout the coming week.